For the last heap of videos that we've been doing here at Tech Yes City, you guys have been requesting that we get back to the used price performance content and what better way than to do it with the used PC parts hunt of the month of November. Now, it's been a busy month, especially the last couple of months too. They've all been busy. All these new products just keep coming out and they don't seem to stop. But there is one big benefit to that, and that is that we've been resyncing the Tech Yes archive. We've been seeing which way prices have been moving. We've been seeing the demand and the supply and also recalibrating our new prices for deals and what I'm prepared to pay. So strap on in, let's pull up the deals and see what we can find. So first thing is first and the market. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more in depth because a lot has changed in the last couple of months. And we've got the new consoles especially, they're bringing the value, the proposition that Microsoft and Sony have offered up on a platter there, you can't ignore that because that 750 Aussie dollars, or if you're in the US, 500 USD, and even the cheaper variants like the digital edition PlayStation 5 and also the Series S, they're offering even like lower thresholds on the prices and offering incredible value for money. And they've got their own subscription services, which on their own are really good value. Now, I can't ignore that when I'm trying to sell a PC at a certain price point, because something those new consoles do really well, at least what I've tested so far, is they plug up with keyboard and mouse, and they essentially work just like a PC does for gaming if you want it to. So the one thing I've got going for me now, and this is why I tested uh, Fortnite in a recent video, the one thing I've got going for me with PC is that they haven't given the high refresh rates on Fortnite. And so that's still gonna be a huge catalyst for bringing people to the world of PC gaming. But there's also another trend going through, and that is we've got the new graphics cards coming out, like the RTX 3070, 3080. I'm pretty sure there'll be a 3060 very soon as well. AMD have launched their 6800 XT, and these are forcing those previous high-end cards to come down even lower, and then that is putting pressure on even the lower end cards. So it's already flowing through where I feel like if we're not getting a good deal on these GPUs, for example, then we're just gonna ignore it and sit and keep waiting. So patience is key because you pay too much for a part, then you are going to miss out. You're not going to, well, you're gonna put yourself in a position where you're really selling an overpriced PC, I think. And so what you wanna be doing all the time is getting a good deal. Now, another thing is, is that we went into low season, but this year around the low season got even lower because the COVID boom season essentially saw everybody buying PCs, anything electronic, tablets and whatnot. And now that that boom's kind of gone down, we're also seeing prices of new PC parts come down as well. So there's all these factors that are crunching on the used market itself. And so with that, I've got to recalibrate. And I think in the last month, me testing out all the new parts in the meantime has, I guess, allowed me to see how they perform, what's their strengths and how they compare to the used market. Because all this is really important in order for me to say, okay, how much do I think these used parts are now worth? So we're gonna see here now, we've got a 1660 Super OC. This is 280 Aussie dollars. I will put the USD pricing up on the screen for you guys and you can match to these prices because Aussie dollars are weaker than US dollars and I do have to state this on pretty much every episode because a lot of people see that price tag and they're thinking, oh, that's way too much. But when they convert it to their currency, it's actually a lot cheaper and a better deal. So we've got this, 280 Aussie dollars for the Super OC. This is a good price considering cards around this area are still overpriced. We're still waiting for those uh, new GPUs on the lower end to bring the prices down on this. And of course, in time for Christmas, people don't wanna go out and spend a lot more than $1,000 a lot of the time. So we can put together a rig with a 1660 Super for 800 Aussie dollars, for example, then we will be still in a winning position. Now we've thrown down a heap of offers on DDR3 memory, DDR4 memory, and some of those have come back and said yes. There is also a Ryzen 5 2600, a B450 motherboard and 16 gigabytes of RAM. They wanted 300 Aussie for this. I offered 220, they accepted. I'm just waiting 
for them to get back to me and I'll go pick that up. Now the next deal is the HP systems, fourth gen systems. You guys know I kind of like these because especially if they come with the cooler CPU, RAM, motherboard, power supply, you can recase them and actually put together some really good value price performance systems. However, they're asking 140 Aussie with four gigabytes of RAM. I offered $80. So we'll see if they get back to me. And this is the thing, this is gonna be a new trend going forward. I think a lot of the older stuff, I'm actually going to be offering less than I otherwise would because the, I guess, healthy supply of Ryzen 3 3100s and 10100Fs that are coming through, and especially coupled with cheap SSDs, cheap DDR4 memory, this is going to be bringing a lot of pressure on the bare bones combos on the used systems that are already out there. Now the next couple of deals that we got up here is a GTX 970 for 100 Aussie dollars. We just threw in an offer of 80 since they asked for an offer. And then the last deal we've got here is a 980 Ti Lightning Edition. These were, were extremely expensive back in the day. They were not only a 980 Ti, but they're also like the best of the best when it comes to a 980 Ti. And they're asking 200 Aussie for it. And I did just say, look, 200 Aussie is pretty fair. Where can I come and get this GPU from? Now the last listing is someone messaged me that I bought a GTX 780 from a long time ago and they messaged me saying they were clearing out their shed. Did I want to just offer money for all the parts in the list? And so we're gonna go check that out and then see how much they want for everything in that bundle because there might be a lot of good stuff in there. So this can only mean one thing. We've got to go hit the Yesmobile ASAP and go get some deals. And we've picked up the first deal right here in the trunk. It actually came quickly right after I left. Someone that I know, they're just offloading their PC and it's an i7-2600. 16 gig of RAM with a monitor keyboard and mouse for 250 Aussie with a GTX 780. So I was like, look, I'll come and take that off you. They actually wanted 300. I just said, look, the market's pretty tough. I'll give you 250. They agreed. So we got that in the kitty, but we also gave Les a quick call now. So we're gonna go up and see what he's got, check it out and then fill up the car. But we've also got two more guaranteed deals on the way as well as picking up RAM up in Brisbane. So this trip to Brisbane, which is like an hour away, is going to be worth it let's hit the road well hello stranger. hey les how you going dude good, yeah um are you up for a visitor today so we just picked up on the way three x58 dell business pcs for 50 each and they chucked in a monitor as well as i think a couple of keyboards and mice but uh yeah this one just popped up as well while we're on the road So we finished up at Les's place. We picked up eight PCs in total and I think six monitors. And then after that, I stopped through and got 30 hard drives as well as two more monitors, RAM, coolers, some more little bits and bobs. And the sting is just like that. The sting is full. And after all that traveling around in the tech, yes, Stinger, we've finally returned to the Gold Coast. That's my hometown. And we've got ourselves the final deal of the day. And this is the Ryzen 5 2600, 16 gig RAM motherboard. And when I was there, I asked them if they had any other parts lying around. They said they had a GTX 770, and then they did the whole combo for 250 Aussie dollars. So we basically got this 770 for 30 Aussie. Absolute score. So I'm super happy right now because this is the first time in a long time where I've actually got a good score on a Ryzen pickup. And I think with the 5000 series out, that's gonna mark some good times ahead 
for people looking for some extremely good, relevant value for money on newer stuff. Because the Ryzen 5 2600 and the 3600, I just think they still represent some of the best value in the market. So really happy to pick this up. We're gonna be building an awesome gaming PC on the channel soon with some new used price performance. New in that it's a new era. Used in that you can't beat the used price performance. And of course, we gotta get back now to the stinger full of shit. And we've unloaded and this was actually a lot bigger and some of the deals were a lot better than I thought. And we're going to go through the first deal that just blew me away. And this came about because I bought something off someone in the past and I guess it's, it's easy for people when they clear out all their stuff. If you're just ready to come pick it up, you got cash, there's no like questioning them or no making them feel uncomfortable. I guess that's what I had this time around. I'm just like, look, how much do you want for all this stuff? And they said 400 Aussie dollars. Uh, they still had two cases, which I've got to go pick up the when I do another parts hunt because I just filled out the stinger. But this is right here. We've got 31 drives in total, including one of those being a 120 gigabyte SSD. They chucked in 32 gigabytes of RAM. There was two untested motherboards. I'm going to get onto them later. We've got three CPUs, one of those being a 4770K and a 4590 and also a 2400 and then there was two AOC monitors thrown in on top of that and that all came to 400 Aussie so that is an absolutely phenomenal deal considering all the drives have been uh, wiped tested cleaned and working and then the motherboards of course being untested it doesn't really bother me though because even if these motherboards didn't work I'm still getting a very good deal considering this is a massive assortment of 500 gigabyte and one terabyte drives. So super static there. That's the first deal that just really put a big smile on my face. Uh, while we we're traveling from that distance from Lezers, we also picked this up in a mailbox and this was just 16 gigabytes of DDR3. We got this for 40 bucks, just quick. Always good to have RAM on hand, even if you don't need it, if it's cheap, as I've said in the past, when things are cheap, stock up because you never know when they'll go up in price again. And of course, the cost to manufacture them always dictates how low the price can essentially go. Anyhow, this is the next deal. We've talked about this one. This was the uh, Ryzen Combo. Really excited about that, especially considering I don't get many Ryzen deals here on the channel. And we'll talk about that towards the outro where I feel like finally going forward with Ryzen 5000, in, in ways being a different meta too, to what the 2600 and 3600 were. They're being different metas. So I feel like this is gonna create an opportunity to get some really good deals. But we'll talk about that soon. GTX 770 was thrown in, 250 for that. Absolute score. Then we've got the desk of PCs. And some monitors were thrown in with the assortment here. But we'll go through what we got off Les first, where we scored for 720 in total, we got eight whole PCs. Four of those being 8200 systems, two of those being Z210s, and then two of those being Z220s. Now he's throwing in RAM. I'm not sure about the drives in some of them, but he did them really cheap at either 50 or 60 Aussie dollars a pop, depending if they were an 8200 or if they were a Z210. And uh, of course, Les always tests his stuff out. It's all working and it's all good to go. Though then we, on the way from Les's as well to getting that final deal, there was a pickup. Well, actually, this is the first deal. We'll go over this quickly. <laughs> Because this one's actually a bit of a concern where I've never seen anything like this. The motherboard was just, and I did like when I'm on the road, sometimes I just don't have time to check PCs, but I've bought off this guy before and he's always been reliable, but this is anything but reliable this time around where I opened up this PC and the motherboard's not even screwed in properly. There's just like a drive, double-sided taped, like even at a diagonal. <laughs> It makes me scratch my head. Like if you're gonna double side a drive in, double side tape a drive in, at least make it symmetrical and horizontal. Um, anyway, we got the graphics card. That was the biggest point of concern. Graphics card was literally like hanging in there and it was bent. So as soon as I saw that, I've taken it out and I've tested it, bent or bent it back quickly just to an even level. 
and then tested it and that worked absolutely fine. So I was glad that that happened because I can usually fix all this stuff up and it's not a problem. But uh, other than that, I'll clean this PC up. Hopefully it gets working again, like there's no problems, but we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM with one eight gigabyte stick and two fours. Like, uh, it's like, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Like take a little bit, like there's gonna be a little bit of uh, I guess pride in the in the final product. So anyway, that came with the monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and um, it's not too bad. I'll, I'll work and fix all the nooks and crannies out. But then we've got this one here as well. It's kind of like it's it's continuing on from this, where I picked up three uh, PCs for fifty a pop, and they threw in a monitor, and they're they're X58 sort of business grade Dell. They actually look pretty clean because they're in these Antec cases. I've dealt with these cases before, super clean. But one of the PCs just had like the power supply just hanging there. And inside the case, the 24 pin was just disconnected and there's no drives inside. But at least at $50 a pop, especially with that massive hard drive score, I'll be able to put drives in, I'll be able to put RAM in, fill these things out. Of course, I do have to get the graphics cards, which I will be having a keen eye on. And so that was scored for 150 Aussie in total. And so, the last thing we had was all the monitors thrown in where we did get two AOC monitors as well with that first deal, which even made the deal even better. And then Les also had four 22 inch monitors and there was also two 24 inch monitors. And this time around Les, I don't know why he charged me um, less for the 24 inch monitors than the 22s. I made a joke with him about, okay, have you got any 19 inch monitors? for $50 and then he just laughed and yeah I, I like having fun like that sometimes we have a good bit of banter when we're doing these deals and um, the final thing was is that this PC too came with two monitors without stands so in total we did get 10 monitors through I think no 11 because we got one with the 150 deal too so we got 11 monitors in total I will have to get stands for a few of them now this now leads us to tally time where we've got here, I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. We've got a total of 1,560 Aussie dollars and in USD terms, that's 1,140 USD. And the amount of PCs and the amount of stuff that we got here is gonna be really good going into Christmas. Now, I did show some B-roll of the RTX 3070s and 3080 that I picked up and that's for the uh, flip up challenge. So we have sold that 3080 PC in the 3080 flip up challenge, but that's not part of this month's parts on. That's a little bit of a secret. So we will detail how much we paid for those, what's going on with that flip up challenge. It's still in the works. I mean, this I've still got to sell one more PC, but that's looking like it's going to be absolutely epic once that final PC gets sold and I can get all the budget together. And hopefully we can get a 3080 PC given away in time for Christmas. But we still got one deal that's uh, left hanging. We'll talk about the deals that we had on the horizon, but they never got back to us and what I do in those situations. But we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, DDR4, which is just around the corner. They want uh, 50 Aussie, they accepted my offer of 50 Aussie dollars. I'm just waiting to get uh, for them to get back to me. Then I'll go pick that up as well. So that looks like it's a done deal. Then there was the uh, 980 Ti Lightning Edition. And this one was a little bit tricky because it sucks when basically we're still, we're getting our like, our freedoms are coming back with the lockdown being lifted a little bit, but there's still like there's different states in Australia where I'm in Queensland and there's a state down south called uh, New South Wales. And basically there's a border in between. Like I live right on the border. I'm about a 20 minute drive from the border. And so if you go over that border, you can't get back or there's going to be difficulties getting back if you don't have a pass. Now I did have a pass and that expired. And so I have to get a new pass and that takes around three business days. And so I'm sort of like, I asked the guy, cause he lives in the other side of the border. I said, look, he wanted $200. I was like, okay, $200 fair. Considering it's a lightning, it's a 980 Ti, I kind of keen to, I like the lightning cards. One of the few MSI cards I really liked back in the day. And I said to him, uh, could you meet us on the border? And then we just do the exchange right on the border. So you just, I give him the cash, he gives me the card. We go, we both go our ways and there's gonna be no difficulties. But he seemed like he was just uh, firm on the price and he just wanted someone to come pick it up. So I guess if someone's got a border pass or if someone's in Tweed, probably go hit that deal up. I mean, for me personally, it's a lot of hassle to get the pass through and then go down on a weekday, especially if they're at work and then you've got to renegotiate a time and sometimes you can just get sloppy. So that deal's sort of like hanging out in the air, even though I really wanted it. Then there was two other GPU deals that are still out in the air and that was a 1660 Super 
where they accepted my offer and they said, cool, we got a deal. But then I just said, look, message me address and time and they never got back to me. So sometimes you get that uh, deals just, they don't go anywhere. I guess people, sometimes people are just, they're too busy and they don't have time to reply or anything like that. And then they'll eventually get back to you or they've found a higher offer. That does happen. Then there was uh, the other deal as well for a GTX 960 two gigabyte where I offered 60, they accepted. And then they said, oh, someone else came in with the offering of $80. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if you're paying $80 for a 962 gigabyte, it's kind of like the prices are changing and that's what's going on with the market at the moment. I wouldn't pay $80 for a 962 gigabyte. Not when we know what's coming around the corner with some of these newer cards. And they will eventually bring out like a 3050 or a new GTX 2000 series card and that will shape up the lower end a bit. So I'm being a little bit more patient there. And I just think like a 962 gigabyte at $80 is just, it's getting borderline pretty bad. But there was a 970 for $100 where I offered them $80 and they did accept the $80, but they said they were out partying on the weekend, which is fair enough. And uh, they wanted me to go pick it up today later in the afternoon. The problem is, is they're over an hour drive away. So I'll see what they can do. So there's some of those deals that never got back to us, but we'll see what happens there. And then there was some uh, other people who had Ryzen bent pins. They said they already sold the CPU. There was some Ryzen 5 3600s. They said they had already sold them too. So those fell through. And here we are now at the finish line of November 2020's used parts hunt of the month. Do let us know in the comment section below, which was your favorite deal me personally, I think that first deal I showed today with all those hard drives, the monitors, the motherboards, the CPUs, that was my favorite deal. That was just amazing. And that comes through not really looking on the marketplace, so to speak, but then looking a few months ago and finding a deal, connecting with someone, and then they come back to you and hook you up even better than they hooked you up previously. So I was really surprised. That was an awesome deal. And I just came in, no questions, came and cleaned them out, and that's sometimes what a lot of people prefer. They just prefer that easy sale. They don't have to haggle or they have to talk about prices. They're just like, look, come get it, come take it off my hands, and that's what I did. Now, there is a lot of people messaging me in terms of I can't sell my PC, there's a lot going on, and I don't know what, what should I do, Brian? Like, it's, it's just a low season. And so if you're, if, you're buying PC parts, especially if we look at that GTX 960, if you're paying $80 for a 962 gigabyte, you're paying too much in my opinion. And that's gonna come back where you're putting your whole build tally together, or if you had $20 here, add $20 there, $20, $20. If you had $20 on five parts, that's 100 bucks. There's your profit. And you, because you just overpaid for PC parts. And so I think if you're doing this, especially for profit, which I do like to talk about here on the channel, because I think a lot of people like to discuss it. We've got a whole Discord where a lot of people talk about deals and use price performance. And so I think in that regard, never pay too much for a deal. And as we saw with this month, I knew things had to be recorrected in terms of pricing. Like when I went to Les, he, I didn't even have to haggle him. He said, look, take these i5 systems for 50 bucks a pop because he knew that's pretty much the going rate now. So the going rate has gone down for this stuff and it's a new market and that's because of the new stuff but we've also seen some other factors come in. And there is another fact that I haven't spoke about. And that is that people who bought all these PCs in COVID, especially if they got a cheap gaming PC back then, they're then now probably gonna offload that PC because they wanna upgrade to all this new stuff that's coming out like 3070s and 6800s. They've seen the performance of that. And they're like, I wanna get on that. So we've got another factor of all that old stuff that was sold before is now coming back and competing against if you're at a certain price point your current price point. So the used market is in a tough situation, but again, it all balances out in time. So what we saw with that massive surge earlier in the year is now balancing out. And even then I'd say we're still on the way up a little bit. We're going into Christmas and that's what I'm kind of stocking up for here. I'd probably be doing the next used parts hunt of the month earlier in December just to stock up again and then get ready for Christmas. And of course, with Christmas being a high season, it's always a good time to have that good supply to match. Though what we're seeing right now is kind of like a low season going through November, October as well. At least where I am, it's been a real low season, <laughs> lower than usual. And this was when I looked at this stuff like months and months ago, 
and I saw the new stuff coming back into healthy supply with Ryzen 3 3100s and 10100s being as cheap as they were with cheap DDR4 and cheap SSDs, I knew the used market was going to take a, well, it needed to recorrect in terms of it, its pricing. And so that's what's happening now. And of course, if you have that high turnover model, you're not gonna be stuck in a bad situation. So there's my thoughts with all that right now. And in terms of GPUs, I'll be looking around and seeing what I can find. It's, uh, we got a Black Friday's deal coming up soon and I might be looking for new new cards to match with the used PCs. Because I mean, the used GPU market, that just seems to be one thing that never corrects itself. And this is why like, I'm, I'm begging Nvidia or AMD, please. Even Intel, if you're making a GPU, yo, come out with something like around that $200 price point, please, ASAP, give us something. We need it. And I, um, I need a like as well. Hit the like button. And if you enjoyed this one, then make sure you hit the sub button. Stay tuned for the next episode on Tech Yes City, and I'll catch you guys soon. Peace out for now. Wait, we got the question of the day before I say goodbye, which comes from Resurrect2, and they ask, hi, can you check if turning on or off LED RGB on RAM adds FPS to games? We actually tested the uh, software in a previous video, put the link up here, where we turned on some of the software, turned it off, and there were some minor differences. Of course, it does depend on your setup, but if you're on a lower end setup, then it can make more of a difference as opposed to a higher end setup. And in terms of having the RGB LED lights themselves, it does come into factor when you're going for really high overclocks. At least this is what the pro overclock has told me when I was talking to them about it over in um, Taiwan and also over in Vietnam when they were doing the pro overclocking events. They said, we don't want any RGBs on our DDR4 memory because it it can hinder the overclocks. So hopefully that answers that question. It's finally time for me to peace out for now. Bye.